Hello, everybody. Ooh, okay. Because I need to be a little bit louder. All right, we are live streaming now, so everybody say hi. hi. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I didn't think that would work at all. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the first lecture, I guess, which is us of the Ideas OTN workshop series. First time this is being done, and we're all really excited. <laughs> this workshop was... Uh, work of Ideas OTN, which is a committee that is uh, formed through Ocean Tracking Network uh, in the early days of OTN for HQP, the high, highly qualified personnel, um, and it, it initially started as uh, a way to connect graduate students and postdocs and other early career researchers on different projects, and a big initiative of Ideas OTN early on was uh, writing papers, synthesis activities, and it, uh, it was quite successful. Uh, Kim and I uh, joined in 2014. We were co-chairs from 2014 to about 2018. Uh, and then it sort of changed hands for a little while. And now Ideas OTN, uh, has, we had some meetings at ICFT uh, with some of you in Norway in 2019. And we talked about what people wanted out of uh, sort of a student-led or early career researcher-led uh, committee through OTN. And, and the feedback that we got was that there was a lot of interest in participating and uh, benefiting from such a network. And we've, uh, uh, Kim and I have spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly uh, how we can leverage different resources and opportunities to bring events and, re and, uh, and, and, and other resources to students and people that are interested. And uh, so that's kind of how we got here today. And that's what Ideas OTN is now. It's mostly for the last six months been Kim and I talking on the phone and, and trying to come up with ideas for ways that we can use what's available through OTN to uh, access as many people as possible and provide benefits through that, uh, the infrastructure that's been developed by OTN. Yeah, and so as Rob said, we were both at the ICFT last year in Norway. And when we were there, we were kind of gauging interest in this com committee because he and I have gotten a lot out of this, just working together, working on different papers and, and connecting also with people all over the world, basically. And from these surveys, these informal ones at ICFT, we found that there was a lot of interest in training and workshops and writing workshops, et cetera, and a lot of interest just in getting Having a way for early career researchers is what we're calling them now instead of highly qualified personnel. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but basically we're calling an early career researcher anybody who's, what, roughly five years or so, whatever. You can be an early career researcher if you want. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, <laughs> but there is a lot of interest in kind of developing these networks among these ECRs, right, who are typically a little bit earlier on in their career, um, just so that as we advance in our career, we already have our networks built. And so we've had a lot of fun being a part of this committee, and we wanted to kind of help with that as well. Um, and then last year in October, we were given this opportunity. There was some funds that were left over that needed to be spent by fiscal. And Sarah and Fred were like, do you guys want to do anything with it? And I said, send us somewhere, and we'll write you four papers. And then Rob said, don't be selfish. We're going to do something that will benefit lots of people. <laughs> Let's plan a workshop. And that's how we came up with this whole workshop idea. So it was really all Rob's idea. Uh, but we've been working a lot on it since October for four months straight, and we're really excited that it's, it's finally here. Um, and we also wouldn't have been able to do this without support from Adovasi, Lowtech, and Star Audi. They really made this possible. We used most of their funds to bring all of you guys here. So anybody who's gotten a travel grant, please find the, the sponsors and, and thank them personally if you can. Uh, to plan these lectures, really what we did was we sat down and we started brainstorming and we thought, what, what do we not know? And Rob and I have pretty complementary skill sets, I, I'd say. So Rob does, he's spent a lot of time in the field. I've spent a lot of time at a desk, basically. Uh, so I'm doing my PhD in statistics. And for a lot of this, it was, especially today, I thought, you know, I don't get to go in the field. I want to know everything I can about study design. And I also want to know everything about writing and stuff. And then maybe I can contribute a little bit to analysis, but I don't know that much, honestly, about analysis either, because I focus on one modeling technique for my entire PhD, basically. And so this was really about what do we want to learn? I guess we were a little bit selfish in planning these workshops, but we hope that you guys get a lot out of it as well. Yep, so we started planning this in Octo October. Uh, 
we started outlining all the events and, and figure out who, who we could get to come as speakers. Uh, Kim and I talked uh, pretty much every day for <laughs> about three months, uh, trying to outline exactly how we were going to get everybody here, how we were going to advertise it, how we were going to get sponsorship and leverage the money, uh, how we were going <laughs> to how we were going to fit enough people into the room. Uh, it, it was challenging. And in the end, we had, a gr we had generous support, as Kim mentioned. Uh, we spent most of the money on, on travel. So to get people here, that was our, our main objective. We wanted to spend as little money as possible on other things and as much money as possible on providing the actual opportunity. Uh, we spent about a quarter of it on food, another quarter on the events. Uh, so that w like last night at the Atlantic School of Theology, uh, the panel tomorrow the night of the Good Robot, uh, and, and Thursday as well, 14% uh, <laughs> approximately to bringing in speakers that could, uh, uh, that could talk about the, the various topics that we had outlined, and then 1% uh, on adding new chairs because there weren't enough for everybody <laughs> in this room. So we had, we had a to- last minute addition. <laughs> yeah, we had to, we had, in order to fit more people, we had to uh, go out and, and actually buy the, some of the chairs that you're sitting in to, to fit everybody in here today. So it's been a, it's been a long journey. So we, I think we've we've tried to connect with all of you now and and share our excitement, enthusiasm, and and gratefulness that or gratitude that you're here and you're interested. And uh, we're looking forward to being able to put this on for all of you. And so, like I said, we were pretty selfish. We have a huge range of lectures planned, so it's really going to be a packed day, and we will get more coffee for you guys tomorrow. <laughs> um, these lectures are roughly organized into the first day being designed, so we're going to learn all, all about the different telemetry technology. We do, we do have a lot of people who have worked with it before, but we have some greenies, and there's so much other kinds of technology, too, that can be integrated into the basic sort of acoustic telemetry design, and so that's what our next lecture is actually going to be on. Um, after that, we're going to get into analysis, so a little, the last part of today and then the entire day tomorrow is going to be analysis, and it's going to be really fantastic. And then the third day, also something I'm really excited for is communication, so we're going to learn about um, communicating to scientific audience, to, to non-scientific audience, collaborations with different groups, um, DFO, the Mi'kmaq. It's going to be really, really fantastic, and I think we're all going to learn a lot. And so that's kind of how we, we kind of tried to design this in a logical order, so from the start to the end of a study. We also have lots of social events to enhance our networks, and as Rob likes to say, make new friends. Um, personally, I think that... In terms of coming up with ideas, we are the next generation of telemetry scientists, right? And so these ideas on how to push our discipline forward, they don't really come out of just our heads, right? They come out of conversations and they come out of relationships. And so that's what these social events are really for. Um, so like last night we had the kitchen party. Tonight we're all going to go skating at the Oval. It's this free skate thing and that starts at, did I say 6.30 or 7.30? It starts at 6.30. If you guys want to join us, we'll go for dinner afterwards. Tomorrow will be the good robot panel evening. And finally I've organized a hockey game on Thursday. I did buy tickets to everybody who emailed me. I just forgot to send you that email. <laughs> so yeah, we have a ton of events to enhance our networks um, and we're really looking forward forward to get to know each one of you. If you guys ever have any questions, just come up and talk to us at any point in time. Uh, please note that the timing of breakfast and lectures do change on different days, so tomorrow we're going to be starting a half hour earlier. Uh, so just keep in mind that's how the, the, the schedule goes. Yeah, so we touched on some of the objectives for the week, but it's really all about trying to uh, meet new people, develop new collaborations. Uh, solve ongoing problems that people are having with their uh, telemetry design or uh, analysis, uh, get inspiration for new projects, whether they're field projects, review projects, synthesis ideas, uh, finding people that you can connect with to uh, make your ideas happen, uh, upload data, telemetry data to the OTN database so people that aren't connected to OTN uh, at the moment. We tried to bring in people from different places with different backgrounds that had different uh, skill sets and experiences, and, and potentially that includes people that ha have not in the past been specifically connected with Ocean, Ocean Tracking Network, but we definitely want to encourage everybody to be part of the network and, and uh, upload data that they have so that we can all contribute to this great network uh, and, and spread love to your colleagues, of course. You know, we, we, we got a lot of applications. We weren't able to bring everybody, unfortunately. Uh, it was really so, tough. Yeah, so it, hopefully that 
people that are able to come will be able to take the lessons that they've learned here and share them with other people. Uh, we have lots of people coming from pretty far away to share their experiences and, uh, and train everybody that's here as well as on a live stream. And I think it's really important to emphasize that we hope that all of you will be take leadership roles in, in using this opportunity to come here and teach others in your lab or your network or, uh, or, or wherever the, some of the skills that you've developed and continue to, to push what we're doing forward as a community. And again, we just want to uh, thank very much our sponsors at Ocean Tracking Network, uh, Nova C, uh, Low Tech, and Star Audi. Uh, all of them provided uh, financial considerations. They've, uh, they've got a, a table set up here with some information and some, uh, some swag that everybody can uh, tap into. We have representatives as well, as well that are interested in, in connecting with everybody and talking about the products that they have and their problem-solving tools that are available. Uh, and strongly encourage everybody to, to thank them and, and recognize that we could not have put this on at all without, uh, without assist assistance and financial considerations from them. And in terms of special thanks, huge special thanks goes out to basically the entire OTN crew, but especially Amy Hill. There's this thing called an invoice. I still don't know what it does, but it allows me to buy a bunch of stuff and not pay for anything. <laughs> it's incredible. And so that's a huge, huge thank you to Amy for helping me organize all of that stuff. Um, as well, Anya and Maggie, really big help with actually making everything look professional. Every time we tried to do something, they would redo it, and it was almost like there was no point. So all of this stuff, it's the PowerPoints, all of the theme and whatever, it all came from them, and we would not have been successful without them. Kormikia, thank you so much for all of the catering. Uh, a lot of John, or John Pye, Bruce, and Ryan, they all really helped with this live stream, and so we're really hoping to spread the message out there. A lot of people, thank you for the setup. Uh, thank you to Aaron and Jordan for helping me, or helping us and giving us this room, so this beautiful room that we're all in that's perfectly designed with tons of outlets and stuff. It's, all, it's in part designed for these kinds of training workshops, and they're giving it to us free of charge, and so just thank you so much to them. Uh, and also just Fred and Sarah for giving us the opportunity and trusting us for some reason with these large sums of money <laughs> and in the hopes that we can help bring people in. And, and we're really looking forward to the products that we can give them, including hosting all of the code online, keeping these lectures so that other people, the, all these lectures will be archived, so hopefully other people will, will be able to refer back to them. And so we really hope that we don't let you guys down. <laughs> And with that, we would like to invite Dr. Fred Worski to the stage to give a couple of introductory remarks. Uh, I guess I'll start off a little bit introducing him. So Fred Worski has been, he's the Ocean Tracking Network's executive director. He has been since the inception. Before that, he worked at the Atlantic Salmon Federation for 16 years. Um, I've been personally collaborating with him for almost 28 years. <laughs> Rob has been collaborating with him for about 10 years, I'd say, at this point. Uh, he is for sure an Ideas OTN champion. He has been here from the start. He's been really, really excited about this workshop as well and um, has been available to me at most hours <laughs> whenever I was panicking about anything not getting done. Uh, and would you like to say anything? Or? Yeah. So, a lot. <laughs> Long introduction for it. Yeah, so <laughs> ma many people that uh, are at the workshop and watching the live stream, including myself, have been, uh, are indebted to Fred for a lot of the work that he's done to build OTN and, and help Ideas OTN and, and uh, provide uh, infrastructure through receivers and, and knowledge and everything. So really grateful to Fred for all the work that he's done. And, and it's great for myself to be able to come to Halifax and thank him personally for everything and, and thank him for the opportunity to put on this workshop for everybody. So. Uh, without any further delays. Thank you, Fred. Um, and Fred will give some introductory remarks, and then we'll begin with the workshop. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, most nerve-wracking part of watching these guys organize this particular workshop is really their concept of the social program. <laughs> Um, the last time they were doing something, they took everybody axe throwing. Now, 
from a university risk management perspective, that's about as attractive as taking them shark diving, right? This is not, not perceived as a wise thing. So anyway, I left the social last night just as the arm wrestling competitions were beginning, which is a good time not to be present. I just want to know, did anybody ever beat Gabby? Or did she? she <laughs> she's the champ. She's the absolute champ. OK. So anyway, at least no arms were broken, which is good. Um, I thank you for the invitation to speak today. Um, I've got some notes here because I want to say something fairly heartfelt and, and, and fairly precise. I'm coming here with a, a wisdom that's correlated with, with gray hair or blonde hair, as I like to, to, to think of it at this time. Um, for the record, the gray is not about age. It's really about mileage. It's about the experiences that you've had over the time. And one of the benefits of the mileage is it lets you develop a more fulsome and trenchant perspective on things. Um, breaking that down to its simple form, it means that you can be taught and eventually you begin to think like a grown-up about how the world is working and what, what should be happening. And one of the things that the Miles have taught me is that in the course of human history, there are certain very, very rare periods when an entire generation is being tasked with the awful responsibility and at the same time a profound and shining responsibility to take on a challenge that's going to impact the fate of the world. Your generation is actually in that particular position right now. We are living in a world where the actions of preceding generations have brought us to the point that we have an out-of-control climate that is busy cascading and doing things that it wants to do with no ability on our part to stop it. We have poised on our doorstep something that's called the Blue Revolution. We are now in a position where there is no part of the world's oceans that humans cannot get. James Cameron was able to build a personal submersible to go to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. If he can do that to make a movie, industry can do that if there are profits to be made. And the changes mean that we could, if we do this wrong, take our ocean and turn it into something that's resembling an industrial park or an industrial site. And we tend to forget that the ocean has been the buffer for everything that we have done on land as we turned it into an industrial site. And it is our lifeline. It is what is keeping us going and keeping us alive. So the key now is to greening our activities and ensuring that all of these future developments that are going to be coming down the tube in this ocean are going to be sustainable and will let us keep all of the things that we have now that are keeping us alive. It's not going to happen by itself. It's going to come through the research that people like you and yourselves are doing in these particular places and the actions that you are undertaking in the course of your careers. It's that long career and the skills that you're going to bring that are going to make these differences. And it will determine if we humans are going to be smart enough to navigate our way into a future that is actually worth living. So solving the problems and enabling the sustainable development are going to be the tasks of a million steps. This workshop is a first step. Its breadth is incredibly impressive. All of the bases that you guys are touching and the introductions that you're getting are remarkable in terms of how it's going to hit you. And it's going to launch you. And you'll do certain individual steps, but those steps are going to magnify themselves through the people you interact with, the networks that you've got. And eventually, that's going to translate into millions of steps. Still not going to be enough to fix all of this big problem, but you have a very important part to play in this, and so welcome to the fight. You've got more tools than any of us ever had before in terms of the, the computer power that's out there, in terms of the communications abilities, your ability to network through the internet, all the other channels that are out there. And I also know that you're all in this particular field because you care. You're not paying you enough to do it for any other reason than that when you come out of it. So it has to be driven by that particular point. So, as you all benefit from the workshop, what I hope you're going to do is take away this memory of a bigger picture that you're, you're working to, that you are doing something that's very important. I thank you all for taking the time to undergo this training and all the good things that I know it's, you're going to do, end up doing for the future based on it and embracing the generational challenge that we've laid at our feet. And mostly I want to thank Kim and Rob for actually having the courage to undertake this one and for all of the time and the effort that they put into this. So thank you all and have a great workshop. I apologize. I have to go to Vancouver to review Genome Canada projects. So I'll be leaving right away. Bye-bye. <laughs>